So I played the video game, and now there's an animated series. Let's talk about Ark, because I've now seen the first two episodes of Ark. Originally, I was just going to review the first episode. By the time I was ready to put out the review for the first episode, I'd already seen the second episode, so I'm re-recording it and giving you more context of the show. Uh, is it for kids? Is it for adults? Is it What is the show? Um, it's very... It's The show is okay. I, I, I'm not... I, I do have to give it props, though, because usually I come into these things and I, the, I always ask the question, does the pilot work? And that's why you should click subscribe, because I'm reviewing pilots. We're actually talking about, does the pilot work? Are you going to get, are you going to get, you know, caught off the first episode? Are you going to get brought into this world? Does it do what a pilot is supposed to do? Because with so many straight series orders, most pilots don't actually do what they're supposed to do anymore because they didn't have to create a pilot. So they just create 10 episodes or 8 episodes or 12 or whatever it is, and then they just submit it. And But these shows fail because they don't have a pilot. You still start with the first episode. Um, and there's an art to crafting a great pilot. And what I'll say for ARC is that the clunkiness of the show is just the clunkiness of the show. But the actual pilot does world build in a way in which you do really get to understand your main character, Helena, uh, and you get to at least understand what you're supposed to understand about the world in which she lives. You're introduced to a series of characters, uh, and you see that people have been pulled from all sorts of times throughout history. They all have this weird diamond in their wrist, and there's this huge mystery as to where they are, when they are, and how they all got there. And there's dinosaurs. And that's basically Ark. I kind of remember playing the video game. And I don't think there was any plot to it. I just kind of remember waking up on a beach. Most of the time I played Ark. I think I, I tried it once like by myself. And I just didn't care for it. Ark was something that I, I I got as a game. Because other people wanted me to. They were like, oh, you got to play Ark with me. Oh, you got to get, please get Ark. Get Ark, get Ark, 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 Ark. And I was like, fine, I'll get it. And so I played always with other people in whatever their game was, whatever world they had created already, I joined in. So I never, except for like one time when I tried it myself in the beginning, but I don't remember there being a plot or a story to it. So you just kind of wake up on the beach <laughs> and then you have to like survive, um, which is loosely what happens to Helena, but they're giving her a lot of backstory as a character. And then there's all these other people uh, on the island. <laughs> who come from various points in history. And it explores that. And the second episode explores it even more by introducing another character. This series has a giant voice cast. Uh, that, that is one of the reasons to pay attention to the show is why were all of these people attracted to this show? How is, how is it that this show is, not only is it produced by people like Russell Crowe and Vin Diesel, but they're also part of the voice cast along with Gerard Butler, Michelle Yeoh, Carl Urban, Elliot Page, it goes on. This voice cast is ridiculous. This voice cast, if it was live action in a film, would be ridiculous. We'd be like, what is this? <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a really strong cast. And uh, they get used. Carl Urban's not in this very much, but... Um, uh, you know, the, and some of the others haven't popped up yet. Uh, like Michelle Yeoh doesn't pop up until the second episode. So obviously things will continue to uh, show their, people will continue to show their faces as the show progresses. And the second episode does explore a little bit more of the lore of why are these people here? Who are these people? Who is Michelle Yeoh's character? Uh, what are they fighting? I don't like the audio description to the show. I just don't. Uh, I don't like the narrator. Um, it doesn't seem like she's narrated before. It seems very tentative. It seems like uh, like a first read. Like this was not meant to be the audio description, but it was like an audition for the audio description and then they took it. There's a point definitely in the second episode where they were talking about the little spiders where the English wasn't correct. It wasn't how you would write that. It's not how you would say it was in proper English, in proper use of English. Um, and 
uh, yeah, so I'm just, I'm across the board, just not a fan of the audio description. Uh, is it descriptive enough? Sort of, yeah, it's, it's fine. But it's, there's something, there's a cheapness quality into how the series feels as it is already, because it doesn't really know what it wants to be. It has no idea if it wants to be for adults, if it wants to be for like teenagers, or if it wants to be for kids. It's got everything in here. Like she keeps talking to Helena, uh, finds this dinosaur early on in the first episode and pulls an arrow out of it and saves it and names it Scary. Uh, it's a, it's a, obviously not a, you know, a actual scary dinosaur. It's not a predator. It's, you know, it's basically the exact same thing they do in Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous with Bumpy. And it pisses me off. <laughs> It's so lame. And she talks to it openly. Like it follow like to follow her. Like it like it knows. Like it just it, it understands her on some sort of cellular level when she like has these conversations with it. And she does. She says she she's like, you have to go with them. And I'm like, you just met this dinosaur. What makes you think it understands full sentences? Like, <laughs> what about this dinosaur? And then she'll it's not just like she's doing the like, I mean, it's okay, it's okay. You know, like we talk to our pets in certain ways and we might say things to them, but we don't, we, we know they don't actually understand the, the totality of what it is we're, we're, we're saying to them. Um, so uh, there's one point where she has to like leave Scary behind and she's like, you, you stay here, I'll be back. Stay, you know, it's just, she doesn't, she doesn't do it like it's a pet. She doesn't do the stay, stay, stay. She just doesn't like it's a person. Like she's just like you, you stay there. I'll be back. And Scary's just like, all right, cool. I'm staying here. You know, it's just it's like <sighs> so they've got that, but then they've also got brutal dinosaur violence. There's a guy that gets bitten in half, and then the torso, and then eaten again, just like they did in Jurassic Park. So, and velociraptors eating people, and, and it's, what are we doing here? Um, so, uh, and then it has content that is just, feels like it's aimed for adults. There's, in the second episode, they go all into this thing about uh, trying to pre preserve Aboriginal land was one of the things that Helena did before she came into the thing, and that her mom's dying of cancer, and just like, who is this show for? Who is this show for? <laughs> Who did you make this show for? <laughs> I have no idea. I can't tell you. It's like, is it made for uh, everyone? No one? Are you... Sometimes when you try to cast a wide net, you end up making something that doesn't catch anything. Because the net is too shitty. And there are too many holes. And it doesn't... Get, it, you don't get anything with the net. You know, you can throw it out there, but everything just gets through the net and it just just goes through. And that's what's happening here is that by being non-specific, you're not really committing to anything. You, it's the series doesn't. It's not really for adults. It's not really for for teenage gamers. It's not really for little kids. It's not really for anybody. So it just is. It's for people who really like Ark and wanted to see a series, but I don't think they wanted this. So, um, and it doesn't really have great audio description. This is in the bottom ranks of audio description that I've listened to this year. It is human. It is human. And almost embarrassingly so. Um, it's not that I can't accept new narrators in the space, but this narrator sounds like they're learning to be a narrator. And I don't think that that's how we should go here. It feels like new audio description company altogether. It just, this whole thing just isn't working for me. And the fact that there are, you know, that there's English that's improper, that is not the way that you're supposed to say or write that phrase. Sort of like if you were to insert a double negative into something. I can't remember the exact phrase, but it was, it was pretty obvious at the time. If I, if I, if I used a double negative, it would bother you, you know. Um, it's sort of like that. And... Um, yeah, I know there are a couple more episodes. I'll probably encounter more things, but for right now, I'm going to give Ark uh, a C plus.
the strength that is here in the fact that it is actually world building is doing exactly as a show that is supposed to do that is world building. However, the writing around that world building is not great. Voice talent, I don't know how they got here, but uh, they're on point. It's just we need a better sh this this concept deserved a better show. So uh, it's it's on the same streaming service Paramount Plus um, as Halo, and Halo is just infinitely better than this. Halo is everything Arc should have been and uh, isn't. So thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you guys on the other side.